Module 4, Aruba Instant Firewall. In this module, we'll look at access rules, unrestricted access, network-based rules, role-based rules, application-based rules, the extended actions you can place on rules. We'll look at role derivation and security. There are three types of SSID access rules we will discuss in this module. Unrestricted, network-based, and role-based SSIDs. An unrestricted SSID is the same as any, any, any permit. All devices associated with this SSID can pass traffic unrestricted by the firewall. Network-based SSIDs has rules that are imposed on all devices associated to a specific SSID. For example, if there is a rule that blocks pings, then all devices on the SSID would be denied ping traffic. The role-based SSID assigns roles to various devices on the SSID. Roles are derived on a user device basis. If no role has been assigned, then a default role is used. In this example, one user gets the employee role, but the other user gets the IT role. Note. Both users are in the same subnet, but have different rights. When you're configuring the wireless LAN via the wizard, you will be able to select your access roles during step four. Here you can define the firewall settings as needed. Note, you can also define firewall settings in the system tab off the main GUI page. As explained previously, if you select the unrestricted role, then it is similar to selecting the any, any, any permit statement. No restrictions are placed on any traffic and this would be applied to all users on this SSID. If you choose the network based role, then all of the rules created are for all the users associated to that specific SSID. If you select role-based access rules, then roles are assigned to various devices on the wireless LAN SSID. Roles are derived on a user device basis. If no role has been assigned, then a user or device gets the default role. Some users get the employee one role, but other users get the IT role in the example you see below. When you select either network-based or role-based SSIDs, you can select which type of access rules you wish to have assigned to the user. The rules can be one of the following. Access control, where you can choose from many services and actions. VLAN assignment is the process of assigning a configured VLAN to the users. Captive portal allows you to assign a captive portal page to the user. Kalia is for law enforcement. Bandwidth contracts are only available if you are placing a rule into a role-based SSID and not a network-based SSID. Once you've selected your rule, then you must select your service, action, and destination. The network service option allows you to either choose any service, or you can choose the custom option to specify TCP, UDP, and other port numbers. Many of the standard protocols have been predefined as well. The action can be allow, deny, source NAT, or destination NAT. Note, source NAT and destination NAT are forms of allowed traffic. The choices for destination are simple and will depend on your preference. IP support both Aruba's inbuilt deep packet inspection engine, AppRF, and cloud-based web filtering service, WebCC, as the single AppRF visibility feature. The Deep Packet Inspection Engine has over 1,500 applications. Enforcement at rule level allows you to block applications or categories of apps after classifying the packets. Application classification requires matching packet contents. It would need one or more packets in both directions for classification of the application. 
at the maximum eight or nine packets to classify the flow. Therefore, rules matching any app must leak packets until the classification is complete. If not, then it will be classified as not classified. Extended actions are performed above and beyond the main action. The log action means that all logs will be sent as security logs to a server. The logging server is configured under system monitoring. The blacklist option would remove this user from the network. The user would not be allowed back on the network unless unblacklisted or the blacklist time has expired. The blacklist time is set in the security window as auth failure blacklist time. Classify Media prioritizes video and voice traffic. Disable Scanning disables ARM scanning when the rule is invoked. DSCP Tag sets the priority DSCP priority that can be configured as 0 to 63. The 802.11 priority option tags the level 2 frame with assigned priorities 0 to 7. When you choose Apps, there is also an option for application throttling. Role derivation is used to assign a role to a user associating to the wireless LAN network. When an association request is received, the network could assign the user a role based on AP or AP group. If authentication is required, then the role can be assigned from the attributes received from the authentication server. Once an attribute has been selected, then the received information is compared to the string and depending on the operator's settings, either match, equals, contains, start with, ends with, or not equal, a role is selected. When no match is found, the user will get the default role. For server-derived roles, there must be an exchange of information between the virtual controller and the server. What is sent depends on what type of server is being used and if the VSAs have been installed. Note, a lot more can be done with a ClearPass server. The virtual controller sends attributes along with the radius request message. This information can be used by the server to derive a role and reply with Aruba VSAs or radius attributes. When Aruba VSA is returned with the radius reply, then the virtual controller will simply place the user in the role or VLAN specified. No configuration is needed on the virtual controller to look for the VSAs. When a radius attribute is returned, the virtual controller must be configured to look for this attribute. If an Aruba ClearPass server is used, then much of the communication between the VC and the ClearPass is automatic. The VC sends a radius request with Aruba VSAs. ClearPass can aggregate the information and perform many actions such as profiling, posture, onboarding. ClearPass can interact with Active Directory and retrieve attributes. ClearPass will return a radius message using Aruba VSAs with enforcement actions such as role or VLAN selections, enforcement or bandwidth limitations, or redirect the user to a web page. The VC can send accounting information back to ClearPass for post-authentication action, such as implementing data caps or session limits, use of an MDM or implement posture. If any post-authentication action is needed, the ClearPass will send to the VC a COA or change of authorization message. ClearPass can also be used as the IEP cluster's external capture portal server. ClearPass is a powerful server and its full potential is explained in a ClearPass course. Under the security option you have several different tabs. Role tab allows you to add, modify, or delete roles and rules. Blacklist allows you to manually blacklist users and also see the blacklisted users. The Firewall Setting tab is where you can enable disable specific ACLs for voice applications. Inbound Firewall allows you to set up rules for the uplink ports. You can also specify what subnets are allowed to have access to the IPs directly. In this module we saw the access rules. 
we saw the difference between unrestricted access, network-based rules, and role-based rules. We also saw applications-based rules. We saw the extended actions that can be added. We saw how role derivation can happen from servers and the advantage of ClearPass servers. We also looked at the security where firewall rules for voice uplinks can be set. Thank you.